Hello again, welcome back to World Cup Spy as the transfer window officially opens for business. Yes, indeed. It is July the 1st and from now until August the 31st, clubs can officially buy and sell players. And as there's so much business expected to be conducted, we've returned to the Football Spy HQ here in London for today's show. <laughs> expected, Man City have started the ball rolling with the £26.1 million capture of the Valencia winger David Silva is a monster coup for City as a quality player and is giving up Champions League football to join them. Another player giving up Champions League football to go to Eastlands is Yaya Torre, who will leave Barcelona for Manchester any day now for £24 million. And James Milner will also take the spending close to £100 million when he moves to City from Aston Villa. So I've got two questions for you today. Is Milner worth £24 million. The other two have been playing Champions League football, but Milner hasn't, so is he worth it? And also, will City finish in the top four next season, or will these players need time to bid in? Let me know your thoughts on spyatmirror.co.uk or just post on YouTube. We've got lots to get through today, and the South Korea international Chadu Ri, he's 29, he's a Germany-born defender, he's expected to undergo a medical at Celtic, Today, the Bolton boss Owen Coyle's delighted after snapping up the winger Martin Petrov and striker Robbie Blake on free transfers. The Sun say that Arsenal are looking at a £10 million move for the German defender Per Mertesacker. He plays for Werder Bremen. He's 25. He's been on Arsene Wenger's radar for some time with the chief scout at Arsenal, Steve Rowley, regularly making personal checks on him in action. Wenger's also had a tickle at Everton's Vils Jagielka, uh, but David Moyes has refused to sell. Uh, and look at this on mirrorfootball.co.uk. Our man in the know, John Cross, is hearing that Wenger is now looking at the Benfica Algerian defender Rafik Halishi. And now, perhaps he's heard that we like new names here on World Cup Football Spy, but Halishi is 23, and the word is that Wenger spotted him playing against England in the group stages as he was working for French TV. We'll keep you posted on how that goes. Just an Arsenal. Seth Rabagas has been saying that he may stay with the club after all, but we're bored with that, so we're going to move on. Let's get some World Cup news in. And yet another coach has done the decent thing and stepped down from their post. Mexico's Javier Aguero resigned after he failed to take his country past the knockout stages. It doesn't look as though Fabio Capello needs to take the hint, though, as the longer things go on, the more it looks as though the FA are going to stick with him. Elsewhere at the World Cup, the Nigerian president has been so appalled by his country's inability to get past the group stages that he's banned them from international competition for two years. I'm not sure he's allowed to do that. FIFA may will have something to say. The only thing likely to beat the talented Dutch squad is themselves. So they've had a go at it. The reports are coming in that uh, Arsenal's Robin van Persie threw a tantrum after being subbed against Slovakia and he's alleged to have said afterwards that Wesley Schneider should have been subbed instead. Good luck with the Brazil game, boys. <laughs> More transfer news for you. And Roy Hodgson should be confirmed as a new Liverpool boss today. The Mail expect him to bring in some very interesting names. They include the former Arsenal midfielder Gilberto Silva, the Dutch midfielder Raphael van der Vaart. There are also two of his former players, Breda Hangland, and they're saying Danny Murphy from Fulham, but I'm not sure about that. Just to take it a stage further, though, we also hear that the Nigerian midfielder Dixon Atuhu could also be following Roy Hodgson up to Merseyside, with Javier Mascherano definitely leaving. Uh, the word is that Mascherano has been already telling anyone that will listen that he is out of there. Ambition seems to be the name of the game in this transfer window, and our own Daily Mirror, Fulham have targeted West Ham's Carlton Cole to replace Bobby Zamora, who's understood to be on his way to Birmingham. And just sticking with West Ham, the word is that they're setting their sights extremely high with a move for the Brazilian wonder kid Neymar. His club Santos has said this morning that they've rejected a £12 million bid for him. He's got a £29.1 million clause, release clause in his contract. <laughs> Time for your messages, and we've got two batches today. We start with a big apology to all of you that have emailed in on Spy that we just haven't had the time to get round to. We're going to get some through some of your messages today. 
Rodney Parker's in America, and he's not happy that the USA went out to Ghana last week. Thinks Bob Bradley, their coach, should go. Uh, Julian in Sydney, Australia, wants to see more of a crackdown on simulation or cheating at the World Cup. I agree. I thought Spain defender Joan Capdevilla's play acting to get the Portugal defender Costa sent off on Tuesday was an absolute disgrace. Uh, to Robert Morris, apologies for the technical problems which saw us absent from YouTube last week. We've fixed them up now. Uh, and the race for the Golden Boot continues. Remember, we're going to send a Jabilani ball that we brought home from the World Cup to the person who gets it right. Most of you thought it would be David Villa of Spain, but Argentina's Gonzalo Higuain is throwing a bit of a spanner in the works as he, like Villa, has scored four goals so far. The quarterfinal should be very interesting indeed. <laughs> More transfers and the mail say that Sunderland are close to signing Nigeria striker John Utaka from Portsmouth in a £2 million deal. The Mirror say that Sunderland have bid £7 million for the England defender Matty Upson. That may well tempt cash-strapped West Ham. BBC Sport have been reporting this morning that Everton have signed the French teenager Magay Gouet. We told you about him on Tuesday from Strasbourg on a five-year deal. Evertonian got in touch with us on YouTube yesterday to ask about him. Well, he's a French under-21 international striker. He turns 20 next week and he scored nine goals, uh, nine times rather, for the French second division side last season. He gets to Gillison on an undisclosed fee. He's their third signing of the summer following the arrival of the strikers Jermaine Beckford and Wow Silva. Uh, Everton fans, are you happy with your options up front? <laughs> More of your messages and a massive congratulations to Paul Murphy in Denmark who's just become a dad for the first time. Paul's one of Spy's biggest fans so I want to do something different today. I'd like you to send your congratulations to the show for Paul on his new baby. He hasn't told us a name yet but I'm sure he will in due course. In the meantime, Paul's told us his moment of the World Cup. It was last week when Argentina scored against Mexico and the camera got so close to the celebrations that Gabriel Hense banged his head as he turned to walk away. He ended up giving the cameraman a good wallop. Um, I asked you yesterday for your moment of the World Cup just to lighten the mood and we've had quite a few actually. Old Root says that my World Cup moment is a Shabalala strike for South Africa in, against Mexico in the opening game. Spencer Mike says my moment of the tournament has to be when Gerard scored the goal against the USA early in the game. At that moment, me and the whole of England thought that we would win the World Cup. The moment was short-lived though, wasn't it just? Keep your moments of the tournament coming in. We'll see if we can dig out a prize for the best one for you. World Cup Spy is back with you tomorrow. I'll see you then.